Google Classroom has been opened up to private Gmail accounts. Let's have a look at what that means for you. This is another flipped classroom tutorials. That's right, we can all access Google Classroom and create courses now. Simply surf to classroom.google.com and you will be taken to the home page of Google Classroom. Now Google Classroom has been a very powerful platform used by educational domains to create courses, communicate, save time, stay organized, send out homework tasks and so much more. And guess what? It's open to private accounts now. So let's go ahead and select our account, click on continue and we can now create or join our first class free of charge. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's click on the plus icon and let's create our own class. Obviously it says that you need to sign up for a free educational now I want to use this as a private person so I'm going to click on continue and I'm going to create my class. Now my class name will be course Google Docs for beginners. Now what sort of section I'm going to leave that blank. The subject will be on G Suite for education. Now this is how you can build your class. Let's create this. And there we go. We are now inside our online presence for the course Google Docs for beginners. Now me as course facilitator, I can add students, I can add information, I can have homework tasks and I can add topics within Google Docs for beginners. Now before we have a look at this communication, what we are going to do is we are going to create our very first post. Now the way we're going to do that is by first of all creating a topic within my course and then we're going to add a post to that topic. Now the first topic will be creating a document. I'm going to add this topic. We're also going to add a second topic which we will look at later and it's going to be sharing a document. And this is how you can start structuring your course. Now you can see I have two topics here. I can rename those topics or I can delete these topics. I'm going to leave them here. I'm going to select the first one, which is creating a document. Now, as you can see, there are no posts. So I'm going to click on the plus icon and I'm going to create an announcement within this topic. So let's go ahead and do that. Hello everyone. Welcome to the first topic within our Google Docs for Beginners course. Brilliant. So we now have our first post and what I can do is I can add some attachments. I can add a file from my personal drive, a YouTube video or a link. Now seeing as this is a standard announcement, I'm going to leave it as is and I'm going to schedule this or save it as a draft. Now I'm going to schedule it to be posted tomorrow. So let's go ahead and select tomorrow. Uh, there we go. And we are going to schedule it. Now, seeing as this post has been scheduled, I can view it up here, but none of my students will see this until the post date of May the 2nd at 8 a.m. in the morning. Now I can add a second post. And I'm going to say, please watch the first video in our course. And I'm going to add a YouTube video. Now I'm going to click on the YouTube icon and this will bring me to a video search or I can simply use the YouTube URL if I have that URL. Now I'm going to do a quick Google search on YouTube for my own video. Doc Beginners, I think it's called Basics. And there it is, learn the basics at this video. Okay, this has been added and I'm going to post this again. I'll schedule it to be posted about an hour after the original welcome post. So let's schedule that. And there we go. So these are two posts that are scheduled to be sent out to my students. Now when I go to students, obviously I would like to invite some students. Now you can simply invite students by sending them an email or you can share this class code right here with your students. Now this is where you can start creating courses which are invite only. So what you would do is you would share either this code with a select group of people 
or you make this code freely available for people to join. Now, having Google Classroom available to private Google accounts means that you, as an educator, can use your educational domain to create courses, to create training sessions, and share these codes with people who do not have access to your training domain. Now, I want to go back to my stream and I want to sort of clean up my classroom a little bit. I want to make it look a bit more exciting. So I'm going to click on upload a photo and I'm going to select a photograph to use as my wallpaper. Now once the image has been uploaded you are going to be prompted to crop this image. So I'm going to crop it. I'm going to just enlarge this a bit. There we go. We're going to use the top bit of this image. Select class theme. There we go, the top will change to my own personal theme and this can be anything you want it to be. Right, let's have a look at the next bit and that's no work due soon. Where does this come from? Well, simply from setting a assignment. So that's what I'm going to do with my second video. So please watch the second video and create your first document. The instructions are optional. The due date will be set to, let's say, the 10th of May. No optional time. There we go. And we're going to do the second video. So let's do again a Google Docs basics. There we go. We're going to look for the second lesson in my series, if I can find this. If not, we're going to use the first one again and pretend that this is the second video. And we can now assign this. So let's go ahead and assign the task. There we go. I can immediately see that none of my students have completed this task. This gives you an easy and very visual way to track your students' progress. Now, as a student, you will be able to submit work and then I can review that work. And let's go into this task. As students submit their work, I can simply select the work, give them points or click on return the work alongside feedback, which will significantly improve their progress. Now let's go into our second topic, which is sharing a document. And let's open up our communication tab again. And let's create a question. How would you share a document? There's no instructions. And what type of answer do you want? Do you want to use multiple choice or short answer? I'm going to leave it open-ended and I'm going to ask them to answer using a short answer. And I can now add the ability for students to edit their answer, which I'm going to turn off. And I can also let students reply to each other. Now, I would highly suggest that you leave this on because this creates a very welcoming online environment for your courses. People respond to each other, help each other, give each other feedback. So it's not just a one way street. It's not just you as instructor giving feedback. It's everyone working together towards that common goal of improving their understanding of this topic. So how would you share a document? I can now again go in and see how many have submitted an answer, how many have not, and I can return work or send a message to this group. Let's go back to our classes. Now, as you can see, you can have multiple classes all running at the same time. So you can look at this as Google Classroom being your school or your institution with lots of different courses. And then each class or each group is a separate course. Now, within the course, you have different topics. Now, as we scroll down, we also have the option to add comments. So that means, let's say that I see that only half of my students have completed this and there is only one day left. I can add a comment and say, don't forget to submit your work before tomorrow. And I can post this message. Everyone will now immediately see this message. I can edit it, I can delete it, but our students can also reply to this, which again creates a very friendly online environment for learning. When you click on about, you can add information about your course. You can add a room and you will see there is a Google Drive folder. 
Now right here when you click on this icon you will be sent to the drive folder associated with your course. This is on your personal drive. Now within this folder you can store all your assignments, all your information, all your files that you want to share with your students and everything your students submit will also end up in this folder. Now one thing I would recommend is that you keep a close eye on your storage because we are now using private personal email accounts. Educational domains have no storage limits, private accounts do. So make sure that you, when setting up courses using a private account, keep an eye on this storage used. Mind you, using Google Documents does not take up storage. So let's go back to Google Classroom. I can also look at the calendar. I can view my calendar within Classroom. And this is again, this is a private calendar linked to Google Classroom and it shows you all the homework tasks or all the tasks that have been set or and completed. We can also open it in Google Calendar, which will then open your Google Classroom calendar alongside your personal private calendar. Now you can also invite multiple teachers to teach your course and they will have full teacher privileges. So that means they can edit posts, they can add assignments, and they can return homework to your students. Now one more very useful feature which has been added last year is the ability to reuse a post. So when you click on that, I can select which post I would like to reuse. Let's say that one and I can reuse it and then tweak it. This is brilliant for when you're creating multiple choice quizzes or when you're creating long form assignments and all you're doing is tweaking little parts of them. So this allows you to reuse a post. I will definitely be setting up my own courses on my website edgeflip.net. I am very excited about Google Classroom being available to private Gmail accounts. I hope you are excited about this too. Please share in the comment section below how are you going to use this, are you going to use this and what is it that you are looking to learn or what you are looking to teach using this Google Classroom platform. Now, if you found this video helpful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit that bell icon for more weekly videos and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.